This is Plant-Based Briefing, How to Save Money on Healthy Vegan Food, Part 1, by Brigitte Jem at veganfamilykitchen.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, host of this curated content plant-based podcast, where I narrate a variety of articles on healthy, compassionate, and sustainable living from experts like Brigitte with permission in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. And this one's a bit longer than that, so it's a two-parter. I'm reading Part 1 today, and Part 2 will be tomorrow. It's by Brigitte Jem. She is a vegan food educator, meal planner, and coach. And she comes from a line of dairy farmers, actually. But now she helps people cook and eat more plants. And she released a book this past fall called Flow in the Kitchen, Practices for Healthy, Stress-Free Vegan Cooking. And it is phenomenal. It's not a cookbook. It's a lot of mindset stuff and great tips and great information. Some of the information that she shares on her blog, which I recommend subscribing to as well. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. How to Save Money on Healthy Vegan Food, Part 1 by Brigitte Jam at veganfamilykitchen.com Rising food costs are a concern for most households these days. How to save money on healthy vegan food? I propose a strategy that goes deeper than perusing flyers. Warning, mindset shifts ahead. Ask where your food money is going. How much of your money are you spending at grocery stores, and which ones? How much at the restaurant? How much on coffee and treats at the drive through Tracking my family's expenses systematically has transformed my life, and I bet it will transform yours too. You can join the fun by keeping your receipts, jotting down your spending every day, and breaking down your spending into relevant categories. Categorize every dollar you spend. Do it for at least two weeks, preferably a month, or continue for life. There are different ways to break down the categories. Groceries versus eating out is perhaps the simplest way, but getting a little more granular might provide fresh insight. For example, how much money are you spending on ingredients you will cook compared with convenience, ready-to-eat food products? Within the eating out category, how much is for entertainment, like a nice meal out with your special someone, And how much is for convenience, like ordering pizza because you don't feel like cooking? How are the dollars you spend serving you? Are you happy with what the audit is telling you? If not, what would you like to tweak? Beyond food, consider tracking your spending in general. Though you might have felt the squeeze more acutely at the grocery store, there might be other ways your money flies out of your wallet that, upon careful examination, don't feel meaningful or worth it compared to nurturing your health with healthy vegan food. We use the YNAB app, You Need a Budget, Yes You Do, which allows us not only to know where the money is going, but also to give jobs to the new dollars we earn when they come in. It has made us a lot more mindful of how we spend our money, including for food. I hear that a similar system, but using actual cash and envelopes, has grown popular with younger people. Know what you have in stock and plan to use it. When was the last time you saw the back of your pantry shelves and the bottom of your freezer? It's probably time for a thorough inventory and cleanup. Start with your pantry, then the fridge, then the freezer. For each, take everything out, wipe the shelves clean, and carefully examine every item. Is it spoiled or so far past its prime that it will taste nothing? Let go of the guilt and throw it away. If you have multiple containers of a given ingredient, consolidate into one so you can better track your supply. As you hold the ingredient in your hands, remember what you bought it for and visualize how you will use it in a dish in the future. Maybe jot down ideas for your next meal plan. Put older items that should be eaten soon or feature ingredients that you want to remember using more often closer to the front or top so they don't get forgotten again. Make a pantry challenge of it. Commit to not buying any new food for the coming week or two using stock you have instead. In many cases, those ingredients will need to be replenished, but chances are you will eat many things that would have gone to waste otherwise. My Vegan Pantry Challenge free printable kit of templates, linked here, will help you with the inventory and provide suggestions to improvise meals from what you find. Learn to improvise the most common healthy vegan dishes. Let's say you found pinto beans. You might be tempted to pull out your phone and type this in the search bar, Vegan Recipe Pinto Beans. Don't do it. I know that deep down you know what to do with pinto beans. Close your eyes and think for a minute. If the beans are dry, cook them up. Otherwise, open the can, add them to a soup or stew. Cook them with onion and garlic. Add some seasonings that you just found and serve with rice and steamed greens. 
Toss them into a salad. Roll them up in a burrito. Use what you have. Even if it doesn't look like much, you can't go wrong with good ingredients like pinto beans. If you find ingredients that are less obvious to you, say chickpea flour, you have my blessing to look for recipes, but don't actually follow them. If you were to do that, you would likely find yourself having to buy new ingredients, defeating the purpose of all the work you've done so far. Instead, read the recipe to understand how the ingredient is used, and then experiment with substitutions based on the ingredients you have at hand. Hint, for chickpea flour, smell it to make sure it's not rancid, then mix with some water, start with a small quantity and add more until you have a thick but pourable batter, and seasonings, things like garlic powder, turmeric, ground pepper, cumin, black salt, smoked paprika, plus maybe a half teaspoon of baking powder, which is not absolutely necessary, and you have yourself the base of a vegan omelet or thin chickpea crepes. Plan your meals. Before you hit the store, you must have a plan. Dinner time is no time for decisions, so find a time in the week when you can dedicate brain cycles to what you're going to eat. Plan simple meals that reflect your priorities. It may require conscious compromises without breaking the bank. Do glance at the flyers because they tend to give good hints about what fresh vegetables and fruit are currently in season, abundant, and less expensive. Keep track of prices by weight from one week to the next so you're not easily fooled. Create a grocery shopping list and commit to sticking to it. Use my Vegan Meal Planning 101 instructions and template to get started, linked here. Or use a meal planning service. Subscribing to a service such as my Vegan Meal Plans, linked here, is an additional cost, around $12 per month, but it's almost guaranteed to save you money while increasing the nutrient density and diversity of your weekly meals. A professionally crafted plan will make you less likely to make impulse purchases driven by improvisation. You'll also be less likely to waste food that you buy but don't cook. Shop like a tourist. If you've been going to the same supermarket for years, it might be time to shop around a bit. Map out the grocery stores in your neighborhood and beyond with an open mind. Pay a visit to the no-frills kind of markets. In Canada, there is literally a chain called No Frills which is equivalent to Aldi in the U.S. and U.K., those that don't spend as much effort on merchandising. There is a reason why we overspend when we visit appealing stores like Whole Foods. Also, check out the stores that cater to different cultural groups in your community, such as Latin American, Middle Eastern, and Asian grocers. Some of those are tiny hole-in-the-wall stores that are bigger on the inside than the outside, while others are big box stores— both versions carry lots of basic whole plant ingredients for a fraction of the price you'd pay elsewhere. Plus, you might just find cool beans you've never tried or a source for fresh local tofu. Farmer's markets may or may not be the place to save money on fresh produce. In my area, Vancouver, Canada, I find that the produce at the farmer's market is of higher quality but costs more than what I can find at the grocery store. It's also a dangerous place for spontaneous purchases of beautiful vegetables, for which I don't have a clear plan. When I lived in California, on the other hand, farmer's market produce was both better looking and less expensive than at the supermarket. Check out your local market with a critical eye and buy the best you can based on your actual needs with the money you have. You just listened to How to Save Money on Healthy Vegan Food, Part 1, by Brigitte Jem at veganfamilykitchen.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, your host, and please tune in tomorrow for the second half of this post, and please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.